In this video, we're going to take a look at how to actually calculate a t-test for the purposes of our IB class. Uh, there are a lot of different ways you can calculate t-tests, and you can measure uh, hypotheses and do probability tests. Uh, there's t-tests, there's z-tests, there's a couple different types of t-tests. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is really just boil it down um, and try to get it to the most simple and compact um, basic content of what you're required to know for IB and just really simplify it down to that extent. Um, so to begin, a t-test indicates the probability of two data sets being the same. So if we have two different data sets, a t-test will indicate or tell us the probability of how closely related or how closely connected those are. It's not going to be a hundred percent necessarily, but it's going to give us a very strong idea of how closely, prop, uh, how closely similar they are. Uh, we measure probability on a scale of 1 to 0 with statistics, 1 being that the two sets are exactly the same, and 0 being that the two sets are not the same. And so if our p-value equals 1, and we were to graph our two different data sets, and our p-value equals 1, these two data sets are going to overlap. Here's our bell curve showing the distribution of the mean, uh, and these two, because the data is basically identical, overlap. At p equals 0 0.5, they're half in common, or they share half of their values in common, and so there is some overlap. And at p equals zero, they're not the same, and so they share no shared data, and there's no overlap. The higher the value of p, the more overlap, as in this graph here, uh, and they're more identical, and so that they're less significant. And we'll get into that, to that more in just a second. The smaller the value of p, the less overlap, and the more significant the results. So a t-test is a, t a statistical test that allows the significance of difference between the means of two samples to be determined. That's kind of a big mouthful there, but basically what that's saying is a t-test allows us to measure if there's a significant difference between two different samples. An example of that, and one that we used in class, is, uh, is the difference between the number of chocolate chips between different brands of cookies significant? So we use the Chips Ahoy brand and we use the Fred Meyer local generic brand. And we wanted to measure and see if there's a difference, a significant difference, in the number of chocolate chips between the Chips Ahoy brand and the Fred Meyer brand. So to complete a t-test, one of the first things that we need to do is create a null hypothesis. And a null hypothesis is basically what we're going to use to either accept or reject there being a significance. And a null hypothesis is um, written H uh, subscript O. And it says, and this is always the case for our, for, our, um, for our course, there is no significant difference between the data sets. Um, a null hypothesis is always going to state or say that there is no significant difference between the two data sets. If the t-test accepts the null hypothesis, it indicates that the two samples are not significantly different. So if our t-test shows us that um, the null hypothesis is uh, accepted, it's basically saying that there's not a significantly different, um, the, the two samples are not significantly different. If the t-test rejects the null hypothesis, then it indicates that the two samples are significantly different uh, between the two means. And we can actually calculate a t-value for a pair of data sets to assess the null hypothesis, and I'll show you how to do that. So our equation for the t-test, uh, there are some functions on the TI-8384 calculator that you can actually calculate this, but it's really pretty straightforward, and you can do this pretty easily just by plugging in some information. If you have the mean, the standard deviation, and the number of subjects in your sample. So our t-test equation is t equals, this is the mean of sample 1 minus the mean of sample 2. That's divided by the square root of the standard deviation of sample 1 squared over the number of subjects in sample 1, or the sample size for sa uh, subject 1, plus the standard deviation of sample 2 squared over the sample size of, of uh, number 2. So really, you can just kind of plug in those numbers and calculate it out on your calculator uh, without even needing to do any special equations, but I'll show you that as well. So then uh, there are some conclusions, or kind of some steps to drawing conclusions that we can identify. And the first is to set the null hypothesis. Uh, again, this is saying that there is no significant difference between the means. And so if we establish this as our null hypothesis at the beginning, we can come back to it and either accept or reject this null hypothesis. The second is to set the critical P level at P equals 0.05 or 5%, which basically means that we are 95% confident of whatever results that we get if we use this P value of 0.05. And this is a very accepted level in biology, um, and, and we could go higher, but this is a pretty confident, uh, pretty high confidence level here. Uh, the third is to write the decision rule for rejecting the null hypothesis. So 
this is going to be the same regardless of what the null hypothesis is or what the experiment is that we're doing, what, what, uh, what measurement that we're doing between different samples. And basically what it says is that if the calculated t value is greater than the critical t value, which we can find using a t table, then, the accept, then we accept the null hypothesis. Uh, the opposite of that is if the calculated t value is greater than the critical t value, then we reject the null hypothesis. And again, our null hypothesis is stated at, or that, that there is no significant difference between the means of two samples. Our fourth step is to, to determine the degrees of freedom. And we do this by adding the total sample size. So the sample size for both the first and the second data set and subtracting two. And we're going to use this to actually find the critical value using the t-table chart. Our fifth, fifth uh, is to write a summary statement based on the decision. So once we've actually calculated our, our t-value and found our critical value and determined whether uh, our null hypothesis is rejected or accepted, we can actually write a statement based on that. And here's an example. Uh, let's say in this situation that the null hypothesis was rejected. We can write and say that the null hypothesis is rejected because the t-value calculated, let's say in this example, is 2.28, which is greater than the critical value of 1.73. And so the null hypothesis is rejected. The last, uh, last set is actually uh, really just to write a statement of results that includes the hypothesis. So to really explain, um, in kind of expanding on number five, explaining um, the, the results based off of the hypothesis, including the hypothesis. Um, we can calculate a t-value for a pair of data sets and compare to the critical value as we've discussed. And if we use the 95% confidence level of p, uh, we can actually figure out or determine uh, what our critical value is. And so here in this chart, we have our degrees of freedom. Again, this is adding up the total number of sample sizes and subtracting two. And so we just find our degrees of freedom on this column. And then we're going to use the 95% confidence level, or uh, it might be written as 95% or 0.05, 5% remaining. And so we just move down this column until we find our degrees of freedom. So if 20 was our degree of degrees of freedom, our confidence in interval would show us that the critical value uh, would be 1.72, it looks like. And to kind of wrap up our drawing our conclusions here, if we have a t-value is greater, or excuse me, is less than our critical value, we accept the null hypothesis. And basically what this is saying, um, or what this is me what would mean is that there is not a significant difference between the two samples. If our t-value is greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. And basically what this is telling us that, uh, is that there is a significant difference between the two samples. As the T increases, we become more confident in our results due to there being less chance. Uh, we're going to skip correlations quickly through here uh, as I want to take a look at an example of how to actually calculate this. So the beak length of two bird species were measured and found to be the following. We've got bird species A, bird species B we've measured um, in millimeters and uh, we have an, uh, an error range of, of plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. We've got six birds in each. Uh, this is obviously a very small sample size and in our, in our data collections we want a much larger sample size but I just wanted to use this small sample size as, as an example. And basically what we want to do in this practice problem, example problem, is determine if there is a significant difference between the two samples. So we're going to calculate the null hypothesis, the mean, the standard deviation, the sample size, the degrees of freedom, and then the t-value in order to answer this question. I'll go ahead and go back here. Uh, you might want to pause um, the video so that you can actually input this data into your, into your calculator. And I'm going to switch to my TI-83 uh, emulator so that I can show you how to do this and we'll work through this together. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our data into our TI-84 uh, emulator here, our calculator. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is press STAT on my calculator. I want to input this data to that, and I'm going to press Enter. And I want to fill this data in for L1 and L2. L1, I'm going to put bird species A. L2, I'm going to put bird species B. And to input these values, you just simply type in the numbers. So our first one for bird species A is 13. I'm going to press Enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the uh, data for species A and species B. So I've got my data in for species A and for species B. And now I actually want to be able to calculate both standard deviation and the mean, and then actually go on and calculate the t-test. Uh, so the first way to do that is to click STAT again, once my data has been inputted into the calculator. And I want to go over to Calculate. 
and I want to select the two variable stats, number two, and press enter, and then press enter again. And this is actually going to calculate the data for us. Uh, this X with a line over it is indicating that the mean for our first data set, bird species A, is 15.1667. Um, the S of X is our standard deviation, and so in this case, our standard deviation for bird species A is 1.722. If I scroll down a little bit, I'll see a Y with a line over it, and that is the mean of uh, our bird species B, uh, L2, that we put into the list. And so this is 18.333, and if I scroll down a little bit farther, here's our standard deviation uh, for bird species B, and this is 1.033 uh, if we round a little bit. Additionally, these also show us the sample size, n is our sample size, and so uh, for x it was 6, and for y it should also be 6. Um, and this is, here's y, and then x is up here a bit. Okay. Um, so that's our standard deviation and our mean. Uh, we can now take those numbers or those data, those data points, and plug it into the t-test uh, equation. Another way that you can actually calculate the T value on your calculator if you'd like to avoid doing all of the um, math for that is if you press stat again and this time we're going to go over to tests and if you scroll down to number four a two sample T test and press enter you want to make sure that it's blinking on data and list one list two this is where it's actually going to pull our numbers from And so we put bird species A and L1 bird species B and L2 we want to make sure that our frequencies are set as 1 uh, for our values here in this row. Uh, this will actually change our p-value, which we're not going to worry about right now, so uh, you can just leave it on this first one. You want your data to be not pooled, and then you want to calculate. And if you press enter, you'll notice that it gives us a t-value, which in this case happens to be 3.862. It gives us our degrees of freedom, uh, and then it gives us our means here. Okay. And using this information, we can now go back and calculate and figure out uh, our critical values so, so we can compare our t-value to our critical values. So hopefully you've already established your null hypothesis. Um, for, this, uh, for this practice problem, it should state that there is no significant difference in beak length between A and B. And so we're going to either accept or reject this. Our mean for this, uh, oops, we got to cut off a little bit here. Our mean for this uh, practice problem is uh, species A is going to be 15.166, and species B is going to be 18.33. Sorry about that there. Um, our standard deviation calculated is going to be for A, uh, sample A, or species A, 1.722, and for species B, 1.032. Uh, our sample size then again is A and B, they both equal 6, so our degrees of freedom is going to be 6 plus 6 minus 2 gives us 10. Now if we calculate our t-value either by hand or by using our calculator, we hopefully should find that our t-value equals 3.86. You might get a negative uh, number for your t-value, and that's okay. Just keep in mind that we want to take the absolute value of that. So if you get a negative number, take the absolute value. And so our t value is 3.86. And so that's the number that we need. We can now use that in order to um, figure out our uh, critical value and then to compare and either accept or reject our null hypothesis. Again, our null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference between beak length of species A and B, and we can use a t-table to look up our critical value using a 95% confidence interval for one tail test. And so here's a uh, critical t uh, value, a t-table chart, and this is actually linked on my website. And so our degrees of freedom was 10, so if I find this in that column, our degrees of freedom is 10. We're using a one tail test, and so I scroll over here and I find 0.05, which suggests the 95% confidence level. And if I scroll down, I find that my critical value for T is 1.812. Again, that's 1.812. So coming back to our example problem, I found that our, uh, that our T value is 3.862. Our critical value is 1.812. So if I fill this in, uh, I see that 3.862 is greater than 1.812. And so what this indicates or what this tells us is that the uh, conclusion basically is the null hypothesis that there is no difference in beak length between species A and B is rejected because our calculated value is greater than our critical value.